Hi, I'm L from elbowpepper.com and this is the conclusion of an experiment that I began at the end of spring. The earlier video can be watched for how I set this up, but what we have are three pepper plants grown in sub-irrigated buckets. They all have the same potting mix that they're grown in, but uh, the one over here is the control. Nothing was added to it. It was only watered throughout the growing season. This one here was watered with a supplement, a macro plant feed. If you've seen those little crystals, you dissolve in water and then you can water all your vegetables and flowers and things. That's what this one was uh, fed throughout the summer. And then over here, this is a kelp for less supplementation that I used, which started out with a grow pack and then that was soon thereafter followed by a bloom pack also using some CalMag Plus at the same time. So throughout the rest of the summer up until around September 11th is when I continually every week would feed these. And I would weigh the fruit once it was ripened. And I have a log here. I'm going to share the results with you. But first, let me just show a couple videos of the progress of how these were looking through the growing season. It's July 27th. This is a quick update on how the peppers are looking from this experiment. That first was the control. This is the miracle grow. And then this one here is the kelp for less solution. We had some serious as far as I can tell, blossom end rot that is just causing this fruit to rot. And uh, that's on the miracle Grow plant. So I'm not going to leave that on. What I'm going to do, I'm going to clip it off and I'm going to weigh it. And uh, I'm also going to mark down that the fruit was, you know, no good. So I'm going to be doing that for any fruit on any plants that I see as I try to record my results. Here's a quick update to show this experiment and how it's progressing in the middle of August. Here's the control and we do have some fruit setting. I've actually harvested one fruit so far, but uh, these are some decent size and I haven't even seen any blossom end rot on these yet. so. That's a good thing. And this Miracle Grow one, this actually is the best looking plant as far as the greenest. And we have some real density of pepper growth here. But some of these have had blossom and rot on them. So that's one issue that I've encountered. And I've only actually seen that on this plant. Now let's look at the Kelp for Less one. It's doing okay, but the plant itself doesn't look as vigorous as the miracle Grow one. But I've got some really bright red peppers here that I'm getting ready to harvest in. Uh, I'm going to weigh them up and cook them up. <laughs> but the shape is different. They're more of a pointy, less block-shaped pepper, even though this is the exact same variety. I guess that whatever it is that's in this compared to what's in the other one uh, makes a difference. I don't know how sweet these will be, but uh, several of them are ready to go, and I haven't had blossom end rot on these, so that's also something good. Yet another update showing how these pepper plants have come along. It's the 21st of August, and the control has been turning out some fruit that have ripened, but not that well. See this like, kind of like a orangish color. It's not quite intense bright red. It's like the peppers never actually turn that really bright red. They just sit on there and don't really completely ripen it seems. So I've, I've pulled off a couple that were a decent size, but uh, the fruit just, not that yummy looking, especially when you compare 
to these two. See how bright and intense. That's that's the kind of red that we should be seeing. This is the Miracle Grow one, and uh, it's got the biggest fruit, the most blockiness to the fruits, and uh, we did have a couple with blossom end rots, but uh, we definitely have some that aren't suffering from that, and it's actually surprisingly good quality. I mean, look at all these fruit. Uh, it's, it's something to be said for that, and I am surprised. And now this Kelp for Less one, I expected even the best fruit setting. I've pulled off a couple, and uh, the size isn't really that impressive overall. Um, I am getting some that are a nice bright red, but they're not that big. And the foliage is now looking, to me, like it's nitrogen depleted, especially when compared to the Miracle Grow one. This is definitely the one that shows little or no signs of deficiency. Uh, this one, not as good anymore. And this one, very, very bad. The control is just barely hanging on. It's September 2nd and I've only harvested three peppers for my control, but uh, twice as many for the Miracle Grow and more than three times as many for the Kelp for Less. But in analyzing the data so far, it's interesting. Um, I had a few starting out with the Miracle Grow that had blossom end rot, but they were also very small. The peppers that have been coming in since are much more blocky, they're much bigger in size. And I just want to show something I observed. This is a from the Miracle Grow uh, experiment. This is a pepper I just pulled off. And it's uh, pretty decent, doesn't look too bad. Now these are all, I just pulled them all off, they're all from Kelp for Less. And they have definite issues with uh, abnormalities, where it looks like uh, pathogenic infection, maybe it's some kind of a bacterial thing. It's kind of how it looks to me. I'm going to continue to count these in as far as the actual yield but uh, qual quality wise we got some problems going on here and I don't know if it's just some kind of weird glitch or if it literally has something to do with the feeding regimen you can definitely see a difference in the way the Miracle Grow plant is looking versus the Kelp for Less plant. It's September 11th and I'm going to be pulling the plug on this experiment just want to do a last video showing the way each of these plants look before I harvest the last batch of peppers and weigh them just looking at the plants themselves without taking yield into account you can definitely tell that the one that was consistently watered with the standard Miracle Grow uh, supplement. It has the healthiest looking plant, best coloring on the leaves. Uh, this one is next behind that, but uh, you can see there's definitely some kind of a deficiency. Seems to be not getting enough nitrogen. I don't know if it's a lockout as a result of toxicity from something else, or if it's just deficient. Um, I was really surprised to see how horribly this one turned out. Looks very, very bad. So, time to pull these all off and see what the actual weight is. Alright, so what did we get? What was the final yield for each of these? Let's go through it. First of all, the control. We had 10 peppers, and the total weight of those was 30.6 ounces. That averaged out to 3.06 ounces per pepper. Now, here with the Miracle Grow plant feed program, we had 15 peppers, and the total yield was 65.25 ounces, so around 4.35 ounces per pepper. Now, as for the kelp for less, 
Well, we had the largest number of peppers. There were actually 21 peppers up until the period that I was checking these. And the total weight, though, was 49.85 ounces. So we had more peppers than with the miracle Grow, but the average weight for each pepper, 2.37 ounces. With the Kelp for Less, we did get more fruit, especially initially, that set. At the same time, those fruit were not as large, and uh, I definitely noticed much more of a blocky, uh, thicker fruit with the miracle Grow. Now, I stopped in the beginning of September doing any nourishment, and so these were allowed to grow. They would get a little bit of water, but aside from that, uh, I didn't do anything to care for them. And you can see how this Kelp for Less pepper plant, it just continued to decline. I don't think that they're really getting enough nitrogen when they're being fed every week with that bloom pack, even though I am using the Calmag Plus, which does have nitrogen in it. But it just doesn't seem like it's enough. Now, there is a possibility that maybe somehow there's a there's a, a lockout, maybe there's too much phosphorus or something like that. I'd have to get the potting mix analyzed, and I don't really intend to do that because I can already see where I'm getting the best results as far as the actual plant health and as far as the fruit quality. So I don't really recommend using this feeding program the way that I did it with the Kelp for Less Bloom Pack, um, on pepper plants anyways. Now I know that these may be formulated for certain other type of exotic plants. I don't grow those, so I can't really say how well they work on other things. But as far as with peppers, these are the results that I got. One thing I do know is that we had major deficiency over here with the control. And I was using America Grow Moisture Control Potting Mix. Now, I've used their potting mix in a lot of other situations and I was, to be honest, completely shocked to see the way this turned out. I did add some perlite and I added some vermiculite, which actually, when you think about it, would have diluted the potency of the mix since now 20% of it was silicates. That may have been a slight factor in why the pepper plant in the control was so malnourished, but I'm also wondering if some of it had to do with the weather conditions that we experienced in June. We had a lot of rain in June. I believe it was 10.4 inches, and when you figure 10.4 inches of water coming down over the course of just a few weeks, rain after rain on this synthetic-based potting mix, well, I think that what happened is it just washed out that potting mix. All of those nutrients which are readily available to the plants are also quick to dissolve in water and can easily leach away. And I think that the excessive rains cause a massive leaching of nutrients and that caused the malnourishment that we now see in the control. On the other hand, because I was continually adding a little bit of some nourishment with these supplementations here on these other two plants, they were able to keep going on. And finally, in the end, the more well-balanced, well-rounded uh, feeding with the miracle Grow plant feed ended up being what kept this plant going the strongest. Because even though it's going through a fruiting cycle and it needs more phosphorus, it definitely needs potassium, it still needs a certain amount of nitrogen. And I think that that was a good balance to allow this plant to continue to grow and be healthy. Now, the basic question is, do you really need to supplement your plants? I mean, if you're growing, say, in a nice compost that's well balanced and all the minerals that a plant needs are there, all the nutrients are readily available, adding any type of a feed, whether it's organic, whether it's synthetic, really shouldn't do anything to help the plant if it's actually able to absorb the maximum amount of nutrients that it needs to grow. However, if you water a plant with any type of a supplementation and you find that that plant responds and that it actually grows better when it's being supplemented, then that's an indicator that 
whatever you're growing it in, whether it's a potting mix, whether it's a soil, something is deficient, something is missing. If everything it needed was there, the plant wouldn't grow any healthier, any bigger, no better yield. Sometimes when you're first starting out, especially in soil that hasn't really been used for growing before, for gardening, for agriculture, there may be some deficiencies. The plant itself may be missing some things that it needs and some temporary feeding regimens might help. If you see that the plant is struggling, then it probably would benefit. Whether or not you want to use a compost tea or you want to use some kind of a water-soluble synthetic like I used on this plant, that's up to you. Even if it's just a temporary fix, there are times that it can be the difference between actually getting some growth, getting some results with what you're growing, or having a plant that gets to the point that it's about ready to die. Hey guys, thanks for taking time to watch this video. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, please give me a thumbs up. Even if it's not something that you would want to use, seeing how I use these products and the results that I got can be at least an interesting thing. So take it for what it's worth, and as always, happy gardening.